You're listening to the Joe Mays and Jay Raff Show, giving you weekly sports analysis, opinions, and discussion. Now, here are your hosts, Joe Mays and Jay Raff. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the 187th episode of the Joe Mays and Jay Raff Show. I'm one of your hosts, Joe Mays. Alongside of me is co-host Jay Raff. Yeah, it's uh, good to be back, and uh, you know, plenty of uh, football to talk about tonight. Um, you know, and, and again, talking about the football games is is uh, pretty interesting. You're starting to see, uh, you know, they talk about you know, you see something once or you see it twice, but you know, now we're, now we're into week three, so kind of trying to break apart what where some of these teams actually stand uh, after three weeks of results. Um, you know, I, I agree with someone I heard this morning. The overreactions to week one in the NFL are usually only outdone by the overreactions in part in week two. Um, <laughs> right. So, but we didn't get to do that last right, week, so right. now we get to talk about the overreactions to week three. But soon they're not going to be overreactions. We really are starting right, to figure trends. out who the, <laughs> who the teams are, who the players are. I'd say – I'd really say it takes five good weeks because, yeah. you know, we've seen teams, teams start 2-3-0 and and then lose the next two or three yep. weeks. And teams you think are really good end up not being very good. And you get some injuries, which we'll talk about later, and who knows where things are going to go. Right. So we'll be back here next week again to talk NFL Week 4. But then the fifth week of the NFL season, we'll be taping the third episode of the Bulldog Hour. And then we also have a week off. So we won't be back till week seven after and next we'll, week we'll have a good idea by, by then idea. yeah week seven i mean you know the buys have started already by then uh, you'll kind of have an idea of who are the leaders of the pack challenging for the playoffs and who are already looking forward to the draft at the end of april which will be back in chicago again this year but you know there are definitely some teams in trouble teams that are starting zero and three um some of them for the first time in franchise history yeah others starting three and oh and looking strong, and there's some teams who you know have won two or three games, but you're like, I don't think they're that good. And then there's teams that have only won like, one game, and you're like, I think they're better than that. Right. And I think some of that is happening uh, as we talk right now. Yes, absolutely. So, well, let's start at the beginning. Let's start with the Thursday night game. But before we do dive into the action, let's give out some of the contact information. There's a bunch of ways that you can, you know, have your voice heard. Uh, live or uh, digitally through text that we can relay to everyone else here. Um, and Justin has that information for you. Yeah, we'd love to have your take on uh, any of the games or any of the you know things we've seen over the first three weeks of the NFL season. Um, if you want to get in touch with the show, uh, you can do that a couple different ways. One way is the May Sandwich Shop uh, hotline using the number 530-563-6297. Again, 530 530- Five six three six two nine seven. And you can also email the show using the May Sandwich Shop inbox at Joe Mays and JRAF at gmail.com. Again, Joe Mays and JRAF at gmail.com. We also have a social media presence primarily on Twitter and Facebook. So if you're into that kind of thing, you can find us on there. Send us tweets at Joe Mays and JRAF or like our Facebook fan page and leave us uh, comments and interact with our posts there as well. So... Week three NFL action, it began on Thursday evening, and it was a game between two NFC East squads up in New York, and I, I, a lot of people were thinking highly of the Redskins entering this game, probably because of what they did the week prior right. against St. Louis, who in the first week of the season um, took well, care of Seattle, right. you know, the defending NFC champion, but... Things didn't go as planned. If you're a Redskins no. fan, they went on the road to New York, and the Giants uh, they came out strong. You know, they're leading 15 to six at halftime, and they were able to come away with the victory, 32-21. The Redskins tried to make it interesting, scoring 15 fourth quarter points, but the Giants pretty much matched that, getting two touchdowns of their own uh, to win the battle of NFC East squads, 32-21. Yeah, and this game, like uh, when when I was thinking about it ahead of time, a lot of people were really down on the Giants. Um, you know, for their for their two losses that they had uh, in the first couple of weeks, um, and then you know when when you look at it, you know because they had week one the time management issue where they just blew it. Um, you know, Eli needs to just slide down, and they probably win that game. Week two, they talk about time management again, and like I get it, they weren't able to run out the clock, but that's not in my mind necessarily a time management thing that's just they had they were unable or the defense prevented them from being able to get first downs and run out the clock 
Like, you know, that was something that they didn't have 100% control over. Whereas in week one, it was something they had 100% control over and they just screwed it up. Um, so, but those basically what it came down to was the Giants outside of those, if you say like those four possessions, you know, the last two possessions of each game, the, having their ball or having the ball and then, you know, on defense against the Cowboys and then against uh, the Falcons. Outside of that, they weren't a bad team and better than like a lot of people anticipated, I thought. Not a great team, but like a solid team anyway. You know, their defense wasn't as bad, like secondary especially wasn't as bad as everyone kind of thought it would be. Um, they were struggling to get a pass rush and, you know, some things on the line, but it wasn't just horrific like some people had thought it would be. I, I think we had kind of put them at 500. Yeah, right around 500. 500, yeah. And that's kind of what they looked like, you know, but. Again, they were in the games and things like that. Yeah, their their well, two losses are combined right. combined five. And points. I looked at it, you know, I was like, well, two teams that we Washington, expected to make the playoffs. Right. I was like, Washington beat uh, St. Louis, who beat Seattle. You know, now I'm right. going the multiple steps, property. and I'm like, but I'm like, Seattle lost in week two as well. You know, so maybe Seattle is they'll be fine, I think, but maybe they're they not the slow world beaters, year. right? Maybe, and that's exactly right. So I was like, you know what? I was like. It's at New York. New York needs to win because they can't go 0-3. No. Uh, Washington's coming off the you know the win, and everybody's starting to think they're better than they than they probably are, and that's exactly what happened. The, the Giants went out, handled their business, and, and won a double-digit game, uh, even though, like you said, Washington did try to make it close in the, at the end, but it, it wasn't close. So The Giants get to – Stay in the state of New York. However, they'll be on the road next week. They go to Buffalo, so see if they By take stay, advantage. You of mean the... go right? <laughs> well, they were in New York, and then they have to go to Buffalo. So they're staying in New York, but they have to travel all the way across the state to Buffalo, who will most likely be two and one when they face them um, on October fourth. And the Giants, you take some time, heal up some injuries, yeah. you know, take some rest. They have a long week to prepare for Buffalo. And the Giants, historically, under Tom Coughlin and Eli Manning, play better on the road. So I, I expect that to be a pretty good game. Yeah, um, and, and Buffalo has looked pretty good. Uh, so that, that's going to be an interesting one. Um, we'll have to kind of see how that plays out. But um, that was a good win for the Giants, and I think you know they finally got past some of that time clock management. Now, the next time they lose a close game, regardless of whether it's time management or not, all the stuff comes up again every single time. The Redskins will return home, and they'll play their third home game in four weeks coming off that Thursday night loss to the Giants, and they will actually take on your Eagles, who today were able to get in the win column. Yeah, and are we going to jump that one? That's where we're going. um, Like I said to you, the Eagles – to me, actually did look good in the first quarter. It wasn't just, like, miscues. Now, some well, of it they, was the Taking jet advantage of missed opportunities right. and mistakes of your great, opponent, great which is what you return, have to do. Right, great punt return. The defense looked okay. You know, they were, they were forcing three and outs when they're not clicking. You know, so basically they weren't, you know, creating tons of opportunities, but they were they were taking advantage of what was given to them, like like you kind of said. Um and the offense was was doing fine without Demarco Murray, who I'm I'm kind of glad they rest him, especially if they're able to get the win. You know, without him, let him get healthy. You know, um, let him get the rest. The other guys did fine. Uh, um, you know, he had some fumbles there, but Darren Sproles looked good. Surprise. You know, it, it seems like whenever you need him to step up, he he does. And Chip seems to be he had following a through. Touchdown, right? right. Chip seems to be following through on his wanting to get Darren the ball more this year because uh, good things generally happen. Uh, the, a problem is that they didn't do anything in the fourth quarter, or the second. They didn't half. do anything in the second, in the second half. half. Yeah. They did nothing. They had a great second quarter. Now, scored twenty one points. We talk about it all the time. You know, when they're up, and actually, it started the two minutes before the halftime. Yep, you're they're right. Twenty four nothing. Fitzpatrick and, and the Jets moved down just field. moves right down the field and scores a touchdown. Brandon Marshall made and the like, earlier miss mistake, right, right. I'm which like, he called the worst play in NFL history. <laughs> Of like it's twenty, I wouldn't quite go that far, but I think it's the worst play. Like Brandon Whedon throws the best ball <laughs> in in NFL history, but it was a bonehead mistake, um, and one that one that cost the Jets in the end because uh, the Eagles were able to win by seven. So we talk about that all the time. You see teams jump out early, and then teams start to claw back, and next thing you know, it's a close game. Um, and the Eagles actually were able to run out the clock because of an illegal hands to the face penalty that gave them an automatic first down. Yeah. Um, 
Otherwise, they were gonna they're gonna have to punt it back. But unlike the Giants, instead of throwing a pass, Chip Kelly did run it three times, and they were gonna punt it back with less than thirty seconds left. Um, if and they would have had to go the length of the field, you know. So there were a lot of ifs for the Jets, but they had, they had fought back in it. The Jets are better than I thought they would be. Yeah, they, I definitely. Ryan agree. Fitzpatrick is is what they need at quarterback this year. Let me rephrase that. If they're going to try and make a run with this group, which I have no reason to believe they won't, you know, they they won their first two weeks. They're sitting at two and one. It's not like they're you know need to evaluate for the future. Well, maybe they do, but if they're going to make a run this year, they've got they've got to stick with him in my in my mind um, because he he's good enough for them. Um, also, I think this is the third different team Ryan Fitzpatrick has started two and zero oh for like in his career, like third different franchise I should say, not like team. St. Louis and Buffalo, um, or si- I think. Maybe in Houston one year. Houston, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. But, like, yeah, he's been enough places that I don't know where. But uh, I, I just heard that stat at the beginning of the game. Um, the Jets didn't didn't get some of the things they had gotten. You know, they didn't force the turnovers like they had, uh, you know, in mass the first few weeks. They, they weren't able to run the ball like they did in the first few weeks. Um, so, yeah, you know, it was just one of those things where the Eagles were able to capitalize on enough of their mistakes. But the Eagles, while looking better than they did in the first two weeks, that's because they looked awful in the first two weeks. Um, the Eagles have looked really good for, I'd say, four quarters now. The bad news is they've played 12. Um, the last two, the second half of the first week, they looked really good. And the first half today, I'll even give them that touchdown. Because if you're up 24-7 on the road in the NFL, that. That's, That's not a bad good. one, and they yeah. picked them. They picked off Fitzpatrick in the end zone one time today. So, like, you know, they made they made some good plays, but they there were still lots of mistakes. Basically, I talked to you. My hope right now is that the Eagles can win enough games to stay in it, and then hit their stride around week 10, 11. You know, like just don't take yourself out of it. If they can, if they can get to four and three, I think before the before the bye, I I'd be really I'd be really pleased. Right, and the possibility is there because they don't play any teams that, as of right now, we think are world beaters or untouchables. Next week they go to Washington, who's going to be coming off that long week. Right, but then they host back to back games against the Saints, who who knows what the status of Drew Brees right. will be, and if he, even if he's back, he's nowhere longer. You know, he's no longer one of the top players no. in the league or that team is anywhere near they no. were five years ago. Then they also host the Giants, right, which, which is going to be a primetime game. It's a Monday night game. But again, the Giants have looked – they've been playing to their competition. Right. They, they lost two close games. They won, won a game against the Redskins. Um, that'll be an interesting primetime game that Monday, October 19th. And then before their bye week, they're probably the most difficult game on this. Uh, the next four games for right. the Eagles is in Carolina. Carolina being 3-0, and uh, being on the road, uh, back-to-back re- weeks. It'll be a primetime game that's Sunday night football. Uh, Hey, if if Philly ends up beating the the Redskins, Saints, right. and Giants, that's a that's right. a huge game in the basically, NFL NFC playoff. Basically, race. I look at this; it really wouldn't surprise me if the Eagles lost all four of those games going into the bye. Like, I mean, really surprised. I, I'd be disappointed, but it wouldn't really surprise me if they lost all four of those. At the same time, it wouldn't really surprise me. It would. You know, catch me off guard a little bit, but it wouldn't really surprise me if they won all four. Right. Like, I, I really have no idea what to expect this team. If you see play anywhere near the second half in Atlanta or most of the most of the first half today, and not that it was great, but just where they're not making the mistakes that they were and they're capitalizing on the mistakes that the other team makes, they could win all four of those games. Because, like you said, none of those are necessarily – well, there are teams that are have played better than the Eagles. None of those are necessarily like Super Bowl teams, you know, or looking like Super Bowl teams right now that they have in the next four weeks. So, you know, if they can reach the bye at above 500, I'd say it'd have to be a win because things obviously would be starting to head in the right direction. Now, is it is the product on the field what it needs to be? Probably not. It's up for debate. And we'll have to see in a month. But if you can, like I just said, if you can just keep yourself in it and and then right the ship because coming out of the bye, they play at Dallas. And then you're done with Dallas for the year. You know, cause and they, you'll get them without them. Brian and without Romo. Right. So you get, you have to win that you one. So they have a chance game. to be at 5-3 and three and probably at, at a minimum tied for the division lead. And you know? right in the wild card race. Right. So, I mean – as bad as they've been the first three weeks, 
it, it's still oh, there. Now, that's not over, over in, in no, any capacity. No, no. Any team that starts 0-2 should to never think that. I mean, I know the odds. You know, there's only, I think, one team in NFL history to start 0-2 and win the Super Bowl is the 93-94 Cowboys um, when Emmitt Smith was holding out for a better contract. But, you know, it, it, the, the writing isn't on the wall saying that this team is done for. We saw what they can do when teams help them out and when opponents help them, they were able to, you know, charge right. out to a 24, nothing lead. They held on, but if they play like they did in the second half, right. it's not very inspiring. Right. They had like, a Sam- couple weeks to, to write some things before the buy. I think I agree with you. Four and three would be great for them. Right. Four. There's a, it just, to me, it seems like a huge difference between four and three and three and four. Yeah. You know, like huge. Um, because honestly at, Four and three, you could possibly lose three more games, and you could possibly lose four more games, but you could lose three more and still get the 10 and six. That'll be three straight years, 10 and six, but still make the playoffs. Three and four, you, you know? can only lose two more. Right. Mm-hmm. To have a chance at the play, you know, like now again, every now and then a nine and seven gets in, but yeah, you know, but like you said, we've seen years where 10 and six right, isn't good enough. Right. 11 and, and in, five in reality, isn't good it, enough. honestly, if I look at it right now, I think nine and seven has a better chance to win them the division than it does a wild card. Yeah, it's interesting. It's uh, <laughs> which is probably how because it of the, the injuries and the and the look happens. of the NFC East teams. I, I, you know, I look at the NFC East on paper. I'm like, no one's terrible. No one's right. great. This is a bunch of seven and nine and nine and seven teams. Exactly. Seven exactly. and nine, eight and eight, which nine and seven. Just back to the point of they but just one of to, them gets in. They just need to stay in it. Just one of them is it. guaranteed a spot. Right. Just stay in it long enough to if you hit your stride around week ten. You know, you could be that team that no one wants to play. Their opponent, the Jets, will go to Wembley Stadium in England to play a game that kicks off at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time. It's available for free (coughs) online streaming if you can't be at a TV in front of CBS at 9.30 next Sunday morning. They'll play the host Dolphins, who uh, are going to need a win uh, after what's happened the last two weeks. Uh, Then both of those teams will be on a bye in week five. Yeah. All right, we're going to quick throw some scores out in a couple games, make a few comments, and get caught up yeah, here. not a whole lot to talk about some of these games. Steelers, <laughs> Rams, everyone expected a Pittsburgh win. They got it. was ugly, 12-6. to six. But the biggest <laughs> thing, and maybe worse than you know getting an ugly W, is the fact that Ben Roethlisberger went down, I think, in the second quarter yeah. with a left knee injury. It looked – I mean, it didn't look – like, oh, my God, awful, like Willis McGahee bad. Right, but he right. got a helmet to the outside of his knee that pushed it in, right. which usually signifies and probably he, he some kind of ligament to tear. The green, to the ground immediately. And, and clutched his leg. let the ball go. Yeah. As soon, he waited until he got a, to the ground. You know, despite yeah. what a lot of people think of him and off-the-field stuff notwithstanding, he's a pretty tough dude. He can yeah. stand to take some beat, getting beat up, especially with the line they've he, had in his career. take, like, a but part of the face. man. Oh, man. Too soon? It's been years. It's been like almost 10 years. He dropped, and like you said, yeah, he lost the ball to clutch his his leg. Yeah. So Adam Schefter's already already said he'll be at a minimum of four weeks. They're going to have an MRI tomorrow. Yeah. Wouldn't surprise me if he has a ligament tear. Now, at first I thought it might be the ACL, which is the worst, which is generally at least, as Adrian Peterson proved, at least eight months, um, but usually closer to a year recovery. But because it was the outside and not the front – um, it could be um, the MCL, which right. generally could be anywhere from four to eight weeks. Right. So it's not a season ender, and it's not uh, something that's going to be very long right. term. But of course, we're not medical right. professionals. And, we'll wait right. for the we, diagnosis yeah, so, tomorrow. So yeah, they, they, you know, to use Schefter's language, the Steelers are hopeful that the ACL is intact. Right. It's I hard mean, to that, say. That's good news if you're just like, oh, he blew his ACL, he's out for the year, because there's a chance he's not. But it's also bad news because, like, when you're when you're hopeful that the MRI is going to tell you that the ACL is intact, that tells you it's still pretty serious. Right. And the Steelers, man, it's a bad time to lose yeah. Ben Roethlisberger. Yeah. You're you're flying high. You lost the beginning year to the to the Patriots in a close one. Right. Patriots look like world beaters right now. So right. that for that opening season loss doesn't look so bad by a touchdown. On now the you road destroyed too. San Francisco. You hung on to beat St. Louis. Well, guess what? Now Thursday you got heated rival, perhaps the fiercest rivalry in the NFL. Baltimore coming to Pittsburgh, and you're going to have to use Michael Vick at quarterback, right? Who doesn't? Who hasn't played well against the Ravens in his history? Um, you know, when he was on the Eagles and when he was uh, played for Atlanta, I, I just think he's um, he struggled against the Ravens at times in his career. The Rams, meanwhile, will have to rebound and go to Arizona, who absolutely looks like one of the best teams in the. 
not just the NFC, but the entire NFL yes, right now. Absolutely. We'll update you on their score later, but they are Whew. taking it to the 49ers. In other action, the Vikings are starting to look like the team that we both thought they could be and this exactly. year. Exactly. They hand the ball to Adrian Peterson, and Teddy Bridgewater looks much better. They open the year sluggish against the Rams, or excuse me, against the 49ers on Monday Night Football, but they've rebounded and have looked quite good the last two weeks. They beat Detroit last week by 10. This week, they beat San Diego, who we thought could be a, right. a good squad in the AFC. Uh, they beat him by 17, 31-14. At, Peterson... at Cleveland last week and then at Minnesota this week, I think. Um... Peterson had 126 rushing yards and, two, I believe, two touchdowns. Yeah. And uh, first touchdown score for him in nearly two years. And didn't have three fumbles this week. So, um, you know, he – yeah. Yeah, I think they found their formula to be pretty competitive in that NFC North. San Diego, meanwhile, they had to make a big comeback against Detroit opening weekend to win that one by five. And then last week they lost by five at Cincinnati. Oh, sorry, Cincinnati not and Cleveland. like you said, it's same state. Right. And like you said, then same they have to travel to Minnesota. So they, they played all teams that we thought it would at least be average, above average, to even good. Um, you know, getting one win out of it's nice, but... Um, they now have uh, to host a couple more NFC North teams in Cleveland and Pittsburgh the next few weeks. And um, they got Green Bay and Oakland in the future. And the Raiders, after looking terrible in week one against Cincinnati, the Raiders have uh, looked pretty good the last two weeks. Yeah, real good. Like, maybe Derek Carr is their answer at quarterback. Hey, well, when you got Crabtree and Cooper to throw to and Latavius Murray in the backfield. Right, right. So, just goes to show, when you don't, when you don't miss on your draft and free agent guys – Look what can happen. All right, look what happens. <laughs> yeah, so uh, an interesting scenario for San Diego out west. We thought that they could challenge for an AFC wild card, but they're sitting at one and two. Right. A game that I won't have much to say about. Uh, the Texans, I think, getting their first win of the season against the Buccaneers. Ugly at, win. In Houston, 19-9. to nine, Nothing incredible about it. Uh, they, you know, did whatever they could. Held on. Jameis Winston right. threw a couple picks. Um you know, Houston's got to win that game, and they did. They get their first win after losing to the Kansas City and Carolina in back-to-back -back weeks. The Texans will travel to Atlanta uh, next weekend before, on a short week, playing the Colts on Thursday night, October 8th. Yeah, I still find it hard to believe that O'Brien's not going to – it. I think they'll win enough for O'Brien to still be there next year. And he needs a quarterback. They need to draft the first-round quarterback. Yeah, like we said, J.J. Watt can't play all 22 positions right. on the field. I probably could. It's just physically impossible to play him at the same time. Right, if you could clone him right. multiple right. times. You know what's crazy? If they could clone him, they'd probably win the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's crazy to me? And I, I was watching a little bit of a tangent here, still football-related, watching a gasp ESPN video yesterday but it, it featured a Penn State player so that's why I hopped in oh, it was all about right. walk-ons yeah. and yeah. college walk-ons and then how teams celebrate them by eventually after you know all their hard work pays off they surprise them with a scholarship the Penn State player being profiled was Ben Klein who was put on scholarship you know James Franklin talked highly of him and then told him about it and all the players jump up and there were a bunch of other players talked about it as well but the person introducing this this five minute video by ESPN was JJ Watt because if you can believe it, believe he's a it. former walk on yeah. at Wisconsin. Yeah. And I think he went to a junior college at first and then transferred like, but didn't, yeah, he was a walk on. And I remember I wanted the Eagles to get him so badly. And you're like, he doesn't really fit the scheme at the time. Right. And I'm he, like, they I don't, four. I'm right. I don't care. Like get him and change the scheme. Like he's, he's a different now they, man, if they had him now, holy right. Now, I don't think he fell anywhere close to where the Eagles actually I, got him that year. He was year, in the late but, teens, I think. But Maybe early teens, I don't um, remember. Yeah, it's just, it was one of those where, uh, man, I wish I wish they could have gotten him. <laughs> yeah, I, so. I, can't, I can't recall off the top of my head. Um, but anyway, yeah, kind of an ugly game. Houston gets a, a, a much-needed win, um, you know, over Tampa, who, again, I think with Jameis, you've seen – some really good things and you've seen some really bad things and and that's kind of what you're going to get uh this year so jj yeah. watt was the 11th overall pick right. by the texans in uh 2011 the eagles that year picked 23rd and took danny watkins yeah danny no watkins longer in the back nfl to fighting fires yeah so. good for him congratulations on yeah. that it's a yeah. very worthwhile cause but in terms of uh, professional professional <laughs> football, he was actually with the Dolphins, I believe, when his career ended. He, yeah. he couldn't even crack the Dolphins starting and, lineup. Yeah, and like you said, good for him, but he was a terrible first-round pick. Oh, he yeah, that was never, a bad, very bad pick by Andy Reid, definitely. 
Okay, Tampa Bay, who the who Houston defeated today, will host uh, the next two games: Carolina next weekend and Jacksonville the week after that. Before going to their bye, I think if they could split those, they would have to be pleased. Speaking of the Panthers, they moved to three and zero today, beating the breezeless yeah. Saints twenty seven to twenty two. Now, at the beginning of the year, we thought that they would be okay. Um, you know, they are back to back division champions and right now they're looking like the yeah, team but to let's beat. be honest they've been okay when they've been a division champion right yeah years. they've got you know seven eight mm-hmm. nine wins um they beat jacksonville week one by 11 before beating houston last week by a touchdown this week beating the saints by five uh but and i know you wanted to and i did it atlanta is looking like it could be a real challenger for yeah. the carolina and unfortunately we don't get to see a carolina atlanta game until week 14 and then they play again week 16 so if both these teams continue on this trajectory we should could have an interesting race in the nfc south between the panthers and the falcons yeah you know two teams that have taken advantage of their of their starts and have beaten some some okay teams and some not so okay teams but hey you can only you can only win the games that are out there and uh carolina is doing that in in fairly efficiently um right now and and they've been able to pass the ball better than i thought they would and they've been able to defend the pass better than i thought they would this and i don't know the key the uh key 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 play, play i today. do not think so uh, I so think i so. mean they still so you know now they didn't have breeze but they still you know mccown threw for over 300 yards but they were able to get a win you know without your your captain of the defense so hey that's that's solid next week the saints return home to the superdome to host the cowboys and just what nbc wanted McCown versus Whedon in prime time. Yeah. Just the yeah. way the NFL drew it up. Yeah, God. Um, in a game that I definitely have I no, no comment on. Actually, no, that's not true. I hope the Saints win 2 nothing. <laughs> in a game that I have no comment on whatsoever, the Patriots absolutely destroyed the Jaguars 51-17. to New England will uh, have their bye already. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. weird. I hate that. I hate, I hate early buys like that. Um, but yeah, New England's on a bye next week already before traveling on the road in back-to-back weeks to Dallas and Indianapolis. Both games at the beginning of the year looking like incredible games on paper and, and again, uh, uninspiring now. play by the Colts in the first three weeks. And now Romo and Bryant missing for the Cowboys. Those games look like sure Patriots well, victories. Yeah, to be honest, like, is there a game on the schedule that you're looking at that you're like, man, the Patriots aren't going to blow that team out? And honestly, right now, I might look at Buffalo in week, but week that's 11. in New England. Oh yeah, so never mind. I, I think November 29th when they go to Denver, and only because they're going to Denver. Well, and that's o- it. Only because Denver's defense has played pretty well. <laughs> like, um, like, but seriously, look at their schedule. This team could, could go, undefeated. go undefeated. Like, I'm not even lying right, right now. This team no, could I go agree. Undefeated. I agree. Now, <laughs> there's our overreaction in week three, but they're they're clearly the best team in football right now. They don't play the Cardinals. That would that would be the matchup I'd want oh, to I'd see. Oh, I'd love to see that. That um, would be a cool Super Bowl to watch. Heck yeah, That'd be a cool Super Bowl to watch. Except that the Patriots might win another Super Bowl. Okay, that would that. be vomit inducing. But uh, yeah, so Jacksonville got hammered by New England. They get to go to Indianapolis this week, uh, followed by a visit to on, Tampa Bay. Come on, Jacksonville. All right, and a very very interesting game in the fourth quarter, NFC North battle. Two teams that also hate each other. The Bengals and Ravens, and as I mentioned earlier when we were talking Steelers, you know the Ravens lost because they said a team started 0-3 for the first time in history, and that would be the Baltimore Ravens. They've never lost their first three games to start a season until now. Uh, defense couldn't get it and done. they had to work hard to do it. They, they did. Um, but it was a real – I mean, it was an exciting game. Back and forth, back and forth. Uh, but the Bengals' A.J. Green outdueled the Ravens' C- Steve Smith. Neither defense could do much down the stretch. But it was the Bengals coming out on top, twenty eight twenty four. Yeah, and the defenses were pretty much non existent in the fourth quarter. Uh, Thirty one total points scored, um, and AJ Green literally would just catch the ball and run, and anybody that was close for the Ravens would get knocked off by another Ravens player, and then he'd keep his balance and run in for a touchdown. Um, and that's really not an exaggeration. That is what happened. <laughs> um, so. That's huge, and I said to you before, Cincinnati's got to be looking at this. All right, we beat we beat the Ravens in Baltimore, and they're zero and three. The Browns are the Browns. The Steelers are and two and one. The Steelers are two and one, but lost Roethlisberger. The Bengals at least for need four to weeks. to push this ahead. They need to come out on top. Yeah, last year they didn't do it. Now the thing is, last year they didn't. Next do it. two weeks, 
host Kansas City, host Seattle. Right. Now, they're both at home, but if they want to be a team that is a, a AFC it, contender, they have to win those games. If they win them both and they're sitting there at 5-0 and coming off those wins, look out. I think if they split those, they're still okay, but I think okay is what the Bengals have been the last four years, and everybody's looking for a step. So, um, And ex- the pressure's going to build for them because, honestly, until they win that playoff game, it, the, none of it none of it really matters. Yeah. Now, Baltimore has three of their next four on the road. We said they have the Thursday night game this week at Pittsburgh before returning home to host Cleveland. And then on the road to uh, San Francisco and Arizona. And Pro Football Talk t- said earlier today that Baltimore will not stay on the West Coast for that. We saw them have a West Coast trip earlier when they traveled to Denver and Oakland to open the season. Lost both those games. Now in mid mid end of October, they travel to San Francisco and Arizona, and they're not staying on the West Coast for that. Um, Baltimore, I think, is in a lot of trouble. I I, I yeah, think the Ravens they can't are run in the trouble. Ball. The defense comes up with plays at times, but they're not that good. Yeah, they're they're in trouble. All right, quickly, Raiders came on on top Raiders on the Browns, twenty seven twenty. Raiders, hey, on By the good, road, I mean better than I thought they would. They're be. They're better than I thought they would be. That offense can click at times. They need some opportunities from their defense, but they've got some players, some young guys. It's too early to think that they'll actually make the playoffs, but I think they're trending in the right direction. The Browns are being the Browns for sure. Uh, in the AFC South, we had a, an exciting game that looked like the, it was the Titans to lose, and that's what they did. They could not convert. Um, two point plays. The, the Colts stopped them. Uh, the Titans they gave up twenty one fourth quarter points. Now I know it's to the Colts, the team that everyone thought would be easily the best team in that division, probable Super Bowl contenders. They've looked terrible the first three weeks. The Titans looked good in week one, but then awful last weekend. They should have won this game. Uh, they gave it to the Colts, which you just can't do. I know rookie at quarterback, he's gonna make mistakes, but. Um, you score 33 points, you need to win. Yeah, and so Titans defense needs some help. Colts, man, I don't know what to say. That first quarter was just ugly. Or, excuse me, the first half was ugly, but they were winning at halftime. But, man, they came out of half, and all of a sudden, Titans scored 17 unanswered. Yeah. And it looked like the Colts were doomed to an 0-3 start. Yeah, which would have been a real which, shocker. But they still, they're another one. Just because they didn't go to 0-3, like the Eagles, you know, the Eagles won today, too. There's still a lot of problems there that they need to correct. The Cowboys Falcons game. I know my dad texted me and said he doesn't want to talk about Dallas, which fine, we'll take care of that for him. And we'll just say that the Cowboys should have won this game, but their offense fell flat in the second half, getting blanked. They got, I think, three rushing touchdowns in the first half from Joseph Randall, put up 28 points, but their defense surrendered 39, including 14 in the fourth quarter. And Julio Jones was unstoppable for Yeah, they Atlanta. got blanked 22 0 in the second half. And that pretty much says it all. Um, they scored. 14 apiece in the first and second quarters, nothing in the second half, and gave up 22 in the second half. Um, Julio Jones just ran right through him. It, Dallas had to play like they did in the first half with all the backups and because of the injuries they've had. You know, the, Atlanta's a good team. So, I mean, it's not a terrible loss, but it looks worse because of how they played in the second half. But right. it's not like this was against Jacksonville or Cleveland. Right. You know, it's right. against Atlanta, who is a good team. Right. They're, no, they're a good team. Absolutely. Um, you know, I think they're three and zero actually. Yeah. So you know, they beat the Eagles, they beat the Giants. Yep. They, hey, they ran the gauntlet yeah. in in yeah. the uh, in the uh, NFC East. All they got is the Redskins, I assume, in the next few weeks. Um, the Sunday night game tonight will be Broncos visiting the Lions, two and zero versus zero and two. I'd expect Denver to win this game. There's reports that Manning's going to be operating mostly out of the shotgun. That seems to be where he's working best this year. Good. I think Denver's going to put up huge points tonight and and beat the Lions. Um, yeah, I I kind of think that too. The Lions haven't been. Uh, that good. Their defense hasn't been that good the first two weeks, and I don't think the Broncos, who are trying to prove something on offense with the long week, too, in prime time, in a dome, that these are all things that help Peyton Manning. Yeah, they're coming off that crazy win against the Chiefs last right. week, where they scored two touchdowns in like the final like, minute right. of the game right. to shock the Chiefs on Thursday Night Football. Uh, the Lions, meanwhile, they're gonna they. I would expect them to be zero and three, and. I don't think they're the worst team in the NFC North. They're kind of where we thought they would be because we said it would be Packers, Vikings, Lions, Bears. Things are looking pretty good. There's another overreaction for you in week three. We already called the NFC North yeah, season yeah, over. Over. Uh, the Monday night game is a good one. It's actually a rematch of, I believe, Super Bowl one. Uh, Kansas City, Green Bay, Chiefs coming off that tough Thursday night loss to the Broncos at home. Go to Lambeau where the Packers are always very, very good. Green Bay coming off of that victory against Seattle last week. 
I would anticipate a Packers victory here just because um, I, I think the Chiefs are, are good, but they're uninspiring to me. I don't. I wish I knew offhand what Andy Reid's record in primetime was, but I don't think it's great. I think it's okay, but I think the Packers at home in primetime, I think this is Green Bay's to lose. I like the long week for Andy Reid. I know, know primetime may not be great, but uh, the extended rest is. Um, so... I'm I'm I think Kansas City's out to kind of rebound from that terrible loss last week. Now, um, I could be wrong, and I think Green Bay's good. I don't think they're world beaters yet. Now, because I said this, um, they'll probably go out and put up Kansas 50 City on by them. like fifty to nothing. <laughs> yeah, so. You're welcome, everyone. You're not picking that because you're the only one in the pool that has Kansas City and the chance to win some 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 uh, some clams, right? No, it has nothing. It has to do nothing with that to do that. All. all right, the late games are all awful they're all blowouts the cardinals are beating the 49ers what happens when you only have 40. three games in the back end 40 Good job, points NFL. i hate that cardinals are up 31 to 7 at halftime they lead 47 to 7 actually game is over that's how quick it moved mercy rule <laughs> but yeah they they were just like i'm done my last night knew colin kaepernick had four interceptions the cardinals looked incredible First two passes were returned for touchdowns. pick sixes thank you i have them my defense special teams uh cardinals look great three and oh Cardinal or 49ers after that win in week one have gotten destroyed the last two weeks. A combined score, probably something like, did they score 20 last week against the Steelers? I think they had 18. No. Uh, yeah, and they all came late, yeah. like in a block. So they have 25 points in two weeks, but they've given up like 85. Yeah. So and defense, not, what's going on? Not a whole lot better was, was the last game to talk about. And Well, two games to uh, talk about. You're right, you're right. Um, both of them by the same margin. The Bills are beating my Dolphins in Miami, 34-8. to um, Can't say I didn't see that one coming. I was no chance in the world I thought Miami was going to win this game because, one, they looked terrible week one against Washington. They should have destroyed the Redskins if they were as good as, as a lot of people thought, they would, thought they'd be. Last week, you can't lose the freaking Jaguars by three. You just can't do that. They're the freaking Jaguars. Like, I mean, look what the Patriots did to them this week. Yep. You want to tell me that that Miami was supposed to challenge them? Not even close. They're losing 34-8. to eight. They can't get anything going on offense, and their defense has surprisingly been downright awful. Yeah. The other game, also 26-point margin, but this one is Seattle with all of them. The Bears have a big, fat bagel up there. Right. Seattle Jimmy leads Clawson. in Seattle 26 to nothing. So that game's going to go final here in about in you know six minutes of game time. Yeah. Seattle will get their first one in the season. The Bears will drop to 0-3 right in the basement of the NFC North where we thought. I expect Seattle to start to rebound here and get clicking because I still think that they're one of the best teams in the NFC, but they may not be the best team in their division. Right. Yeah, so there's going to be some crazy games out west, um, but I think the Seahawks will still be right there at the end. All right, one last thing before we sign off here is uh, we're four weeks into the Penn State season as well. Yeah. They had a, uh, a win this weekend following a big win, la win, yeah. Yeah, big win last weekend against Rutgers. That was a much better victory than the one we saw against San Diego State yesterday. Uh, but, hey, a win is a win. Hey, Penn State's 3-1, and one, winners of three straight. Their offensive line has looked much better since that. First time they've won their Temple. first three at home in, like, a few years. Um they so, uh, they good. have uh, one more that you know you hope for a win before starting to hit the meat of your schedule. Um, going on the road to Ohio State's coming up in October. My my expectations, you know, we didn't do this on the air, and I right. know when they lost the Temple, we were like, I'm glad we didn't do this. To be perfectly honest, I know you said eight and four regular season with a bowl victory. Yeah. I went nine and three regular season with a bowl loss. I think both are still attainable because yeah. other than Ohio State, Mi Michigan State, yeah. and at times so far Michigan, who's yeah. looked very good, I don't know if there's any other team on the schedule that I think is automatic loss. Right. I think Ohio State's an automatic loss because it's yes. on the road. Um, I believe they do play Michigan State at the on end the of the road. year, on also on the road. So I think that's automatic two right there. The so you're already and, up to my three. And teams that are looking to get style points. Too, right. So that could be ugly. Um, so you, you've got to win the games you should win, you know, against teams like Indiana, and Illinois. Army. Ar yeah, Army this coming week. I know Military Appreciation Day, so thank you to everyone that has served and is serving. Um, but I hope Penn State beats Army. Although <laughs> yes. I'm a Navy person anyway, so... <laughs> <laughs> I know yeah. your wife loves that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, she's going to the game this week, so that'll be cool for her. Um, 
What but are yeah. your expectations for Penn State the rest of the year? I'm still gonna hold out at eight hope and for four? eight and four. I think, I think people viewed my eight and four as pessimistic. You know, many people. That's right around where I expected. And them. yet, um, you know, I think now, like after week one, people were like eight and four would be optimistic, and um, I think eight and four. I to be honest, I think I've seen improvements. Now they still have a long way to go, but the young guys are are getting better. Um, you know, I know it's not what people want to hear, but these are the years. These are the years where we don't have the upperclassmen because of the sanctions. Like that's, right. it's a reality. Um, you know, and as you got to give them a chance. Now that being said, I I like that Hackenberg threw for over 300 yards yesterday. Uh, even if it is against San Diego State, I don't care. Uh, just a win's a win, right? right. Get to, get to eight wins and I'll, and that's good. Um, and then you you got to start taking strides next year. You know. Um, especially with Michigan looking like they're they're rebounding pretty quick. They're, yeah. They well, and look what BYU look what yesterday. Utah did to Oregon. Right. That's who Utah. Be, that's who right. beat Michigan beat in by week what, one. Forty two points at. They at destroyed Oregon. the Ducks like with sixty two twenty or something. Like that. Wow. Yeah. And the last touchdown was like at the very end of the game for Oregon. Like, yeah. <laughs> it was should have been worse. Very, it wasn't as close as it sounded. So, so. yeah, I, I would say if I had to, uh, you know, edit my off the air prediction from the beginning of the season where I said nine and three with a bowl loss. I'll say eight and four. I don't know if I can comment about the bowl. At the beginning of the year, I was thinking at nine and three, they're probably getting in too good of right. a bowl against right, a really right. very good, you know, SEC team get, or something. SEC only gets one team in that playoff, and then like, right. it trickle yeah. down like so, it's a disaster. <laughs> um, so I'll say, yeah, I think I'd expect them to probably lose three more. I'm getting Ohio State and Michigan State for sure. I'd like to say it won't be Michigan because I'm supposed to be at that game, right. so I'd like to see a victory. Uh, but I think there will be one more stumbling block besides those two against the, you know those top ten teams. Um, I'd but love to see both, leaves, both, both the of them ones. make like, the playoffs. You gotta, that would be nice. Yeah, you gotta you gotta beat you you have to beat like Indiana in two weeks. Like yeah. you, you have to win that one. You know, you ha- yeah, those are the games you have to win if you want to get the eight wins. And that question came from my dad who also sends in one last one before we sign off. It's just kind of a comment. Uh, he says he loves Franklin as a recruiter, but he's still not sure about him as a head coach. I think that's the way a lot of people feel because you know, we talked about it last year. Sometimes game decisions with time management, play calling uh, reliability or his resistance to alter what his coordinators are doing, mostly offensive, because his right. shoop as DC has done a pretty good job, very right. admirable job. Actually, he was possibly going to LSU right. uh, in the offseason. But John Donovan in the offense, that one's coming under fire. Right. Um, his ability to use Hackenberg properly. Um, but, yeah, his game taste stuff on the field, you know, during – during the moments that right. count in the win loss column, a lot of people question that. I know he he's my dad is among them, but right. you know it's kind of one of those things where what do you want though? Do you want the under talented teams that are going to struggle to compete against the good teams, you know, because they're they're outmatched every time, or do you at least want to have the people like it, it's a it's a tough one, and I don't really know, you know, um, you know, I kind of view this year like I think he'll be able to do this year at Penn State what he was able to do at at Vanderbilt in the SEC where he had much lesser talent than what he's bringing in f- over the – that should be there for the next few years at at Penn State, and that's win the games you're supposed to win. Now, I know Temple, a lot of people are like, that's a game they should, they're they supposed to win. I agree. and But I said it to you on the air, off the air. You're the loss to Temple, it, yeah. the loss of Temple isn't what bothers – I mean, I'm disappointed, but it's how they lost to Temple. Yeah, yeah. And they've, play, they've played better since then. Like – they haven't been playing, playing, playing great, but they've been improving. And at the same time, like Temple, like I know they squeaked by UMass last week, but like Temple has a chance to go undefeated into Notre Dame, you know. Like so, Temple's not the pushover that everyone used to think they are. Right. Um, and then at the same time, Penn State's not a ten and two team. Like you know, that's just the reality. Of it. And you know, when you have a and huge... if you want to be a ten and two team, you have to get four or five star guys, and Penn State's starting to do that. You have you have a huge shift in philosophy from Bill O'Brien's Penn State to James Franklin Penn State, and you know, as it pains me to hate, because I don't want to, I'm not really hating on Christian Hackenberg, but he's not the quarterback that James no. Franklin wants to run his style of offense that he's using with John, you know, with Donovan. Right. You know, so Hackenberg is as good as gone. You know that it's happening right. because pros still are going to want him despite what he's done on two years right. under Franklin. So he's gone. It wouldn't surprise me another year with all these young guys getting bigger, stronger, and acquainted with uh, college football, having one of uh, Franklin's quarterbacks, whether it's McSorley or someone else, running the offense, and all of a sudden next year they're the 10-2 and two team. Right. And people are like, oh, but you had Christian. 
the system is huge in college football. It's, and yeah. you look, I mean, look what Hackenberg did as freshman under O'Brien's pro style offense, and look what he's done the last right. year plus in Franklin Donovan's right. offense. You yeah. know, it, it, it's a different world. I, I think to me. If I was running a college program, I don't mean as a coach. I mean as a, like an athletic department. A new coach, I think, has to be guaranteed four years. You have to get three or four of your recruiting classes yeah. in there. Franklin's only in year two. So right. patience, people, relax. Right. Let things work itself out. There's three and one. It's coming. They're yeah, there's three. three. Stop. Yeah. And the go. loss to Temple is terrible. Yeah. Whatever. Move on. Beat Army. Get into the Big Ten slate. You already beat Rutgers. All right. You know. Have close losses to the good teams, but then, but then, uh, you know, win the ones you're supposed to. Right. So. Yeah, exactly. Uh, any shout outs for you this evening? Congratulations to the boys water yes. Bowl team for winning. Absolutely. Teams. Excellent. Congratulations to you and Adam uh, and your boys for bringing home the Beast of the East title. When was the last time you won it? 2008. Okay. So it's been a few years. So yeah. congratulations on a huge win. Uh, last year you won states. Now you get the Beast of the East. Hopefully this year you can back to back. Yeah, a lot of work to do. A couple do. tough teams we'll, we'll and, uh, and uh, Cumberland Valley is who you beat and they're in the championship last we night. We beat Prep in the Cathedral Prep beat Cumberland beat Valley. Beat Cumberland Valley in the semifinal, but two really tough teams. They it was a two two goal game. Okay, their game. So yeah, lot, lots of work to do before that right. that gets on the screen. So we'll we'll have to wait and see. All right. Well, I think that's everything. So that wraps up the 187th episode of the Joe Mays and J Rap Show. Uh, we hope you tune in every Sunday evening at 6.30 for our take on sports. Until next time, I'm Jay Raff. And I'm Joe Mays. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to the Joe Mays and Jay Raff Show. Don't forget, you can download each episode of the show from the podcast section of the iTunes Store. We'll see you next time, and thanks again for listening.